My name's Jo, and as I've just been introduced, I'm from the organisation BritDoc. Um, it really is an honour for us to be here presenting with a fairly young project amongst such long-standing experts in the field. Um, I have a very short slot, so I'll be as quick as I can. Um, apologies, I'm really following my notes. Although I've got over 10 years' experience of delivering education campaigns and programmes, I've only got two days' experience with BritDoc, so forgive me for following my notes. Um, and one of the first things on my uh, task list is to add more photos to presentations, as you'll uh, discover. This is a quick overview of what Doc Academy is. It's an online platform devised by teachers. It's free and available to all. There's a bank of um, short clips of documentary feature films embedded into full schemes of work for English. Films Film clips are tied to the English uh, national curriculum and objectives around key stage uh, three GCSE and A-level in England, that's ages 11 through to 18. It's easy to use with no specialist teacher training requ required. So what are um, Doc Academy's aims? Well, really its mission is to provide new and useful tools for teachers in the classroom but really to be cutting edge and to be the absolute best. It wants to engage students with stories about the world around them, but more than that, to challenge perceptions about um, a whole range of topics, some, some I'll come on to a bit later, and importantly, to grow the next generation of documentary film lovers. So at the core sort of heart, the core principles of Doc Academy and, and Brit Doc, I guess, is that documentary matters that it's at the heart of um, sorry, I've jumped ahead there. That it's at the heart of formal uh, learning of core subjects. Doc Academy is a way to make um, quality documentary film part of young people's everyday lives. I mean, that's what, something that I was really excited about and why I wanted to join the project. In a really curriculum crowded school day, um, and the sort of media that young people in the in the UK are exposed to right now, this work I feel and uh, Doc Academy feels is really, really vital. It, pro it provides a revenue um, stream for filmmakers. So, you know, that's just something that's really important to BritDoc. So there's a licensing system, and you can talk to me more about that if it interests you. It's teacher-led. What's important, it's accessible to all schools. It's online. It's very, very simple to use, which we know is critical, and I know is critical with all my experience of if you want teachers to use something, it has to be very, very easy. And vitally, quality of design. High quality film, high quality lessons and lesson plans. So high quality is absolutely paramount to the project. Our Skip through this quickly. This was, uh, there was a pilot in uh, 2012, 14 films, 18 schools across England, nine schools with above average levels of deprivation, 20 teachers, 679 pupils. Again, I can talk a lot more about that at the uh, speed dating tomorrow. Um, Doc Academy um, is really, really popular with teachers because... It's accessible across all the abilities in their school. It is accessible, teachers tell us, that it's accessible to lower abilities, and with their higher ability uh, pupils, they engage more deeply with the film. The beauty of this is self-explanatory. It's a high-quality resource that has mass appeal. But importantly, when you, in the knowledge that preconceived ideas are developed and formed at an early age, regardless of your um, ability or your... your your background. I am going to skip through that one. Um, I won't read all of these figures out, but just to give you an idea of the spread so far, 480 schools, 656 teachers, just gives you a bit of an idea. An average sign-up at the moment of 29 schools per month, and that's with no real marketing drive at all, so it's sort of an organic sign-up at the moment. 55% um, above average, what we call free school meal scheme, which is sort of our deprivation indicator level. Um, and that is 
you know, a lot higher than the national average. And it sort of tells you something about the sort of schools that are using this resource so far. It's representative of our, our sort of demographics in, in the UK, uh, in England rather. Uh, and again, similar to the free school meals, 55% uh, above average for English as a first language. Again, something to talk more about tomorrow. So what do teachers um, tell us? Teachers telling, are telling us it makes a real difference to analytical and critical thinking, cultural literacy, class contribution, lively discussions, media literacy, increased empathy, and that's something, you know, really, really key to what's going on here, and more group sharing. But they also tell us um, feedback from, from the young people that take part in the project. The One Mile Away film reached one boy. He was a reluctant learner and disliked talking or answering questions in class. As the gang topics of the film touched on personal experiences from his life, he became more engaged and involved in the lessons and really found his voice. The scheme of work around Monica and David, which is a film about a Down syndrome couple that's used within the uh, Doc Academy uh, library, if you like, was an interesting stimulus to compare cultural attitudes to disabilities. The feedback was that one student who had pre previously felt repulsed by people with Down syndrome through fear suddenly realised that they were real people. This is feedback from teachers highlighting how the project really does teach young people about um, the world around them, but it challenges their perceptions. So future plans. Now I'm here, and this is the bit I can talk about, this is what they want me to do, I guess, is to replicate at scale. Bigger, but critically maintaining the high quality because it's that that stands uh, Doc Academy out from anything else that's going on in England at the moment. More affected evaluation, including measurement of harder academic outcomes, and that's driven by the fact that's what people and funders and supporters, they want to know about that, obviously. I've joined at a time where there's discussions about a revenue stream, so that that's something that is being considered, but in balance with keeping it available to all, so it's a, a big discussion to be had. And this is something that I've got a lot of experience uh, with, is building on what we're calling youth social action. Uh, feedback um, from, our, from our teachers are, when you're, when you're teaching this stuff and you're using these films, if any of uh, the young people are moved by either the film or the, the lesson and the, the learning, the critical learning that follows, they, they want to take up the baton. They want to then go on from that moment and make action and take action. And getting that feedback and learning more about that, it just shows the opportunity and potential that Doc Academy has to encourage uh, social change by young people. I hope that was quick and brief. And again, I, am, I do apologise for just reading from notes there. But I did want to leave you with... Um, a trailer of one of the films that we use on the Doc Academy project. And it's one that is really, really popular with young people. And it's just, um, can start playing. And it's just interesting because the subject matter is quite the opposite we win. of young people. <laughs> that is in the lap of the gods. Life's battles don't always go to a stronger or fitter man. But sooner or late, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. I should get her, she can't. You should never count your chickens, darling. All your eggs you have. Cause I believe, I believe in my soul. You finally met your man. Will you never it's the first time during my whole career I ran into the table. Must be because of old age. Why are you participating in this competition? Ah. You are so old. Oh, not that old. He lost my husband and daughter.
and I was playing table tennis, and I think that saved me. It's something to do, it's something to keep my mind together. I've had two lots of cancer, but the doctors always said, and the consultant always said, well, keep playing, keep playing. I don't want to go home, watch television, and then just die. Fürchterliche Satz, die Jungen machen sich in die Hose. Das habe ich gesagt angeblich. You begin to value your time more as one gets older. As you get near to the winning post, you only think, well, what is at the other side of this barrier?